Suppose we've solved a differential equation, uh, and the solution that we get looks something like this, the square root of 3 times the sine of t plus 1 times the cosine of t. This form is useful for some purposes, but if we wanted to quickly determine the amplitude of this function, or let's say the phase shift, thinking of it as a simple sinusoid, it's kind of difficult to do it directly from this expression. So what we do instead is we transform it into a single trig function with an amplitude a and a phase shift phi. So how do we translate between the solution that we got and the form that we'd like? Well, the first step is to take advantage of the trig identity, cosine of t minus phi, which can be written as the cosine of t times the cosine of phi plus the sine of t times the sine of phi. Now perhaps you're familiar with this identity having a plus here and a minus here. The only difference is that you replace a minus phi by a plus phi, which means you put a minus phi here and that cosine is even so the minus sign is killed and when you put the minus v into the sine function, it's odd, so it moves out in front. So these two trig identities are equivalent, but this one is a little bit simpler to use in this case. So uh, what are we looking for now? We're trying to match up the form that we want to the form that we have. So you'll notice I have a cosine t with a 1 in front, and I have a sine t with a root 3 in front. Down here I have a cosine t with a cos v, and a sine t with a sine phi. So we can match up these pieces and notice that the sine t here, like this sine t here, has a sine phi in front, but here it's a root 3. So we're t it's tempting to say, oh, let's just make sure sine of phi is equal to the square root of 3. And similarly, we can say we want the cosine of phi to be equal to now the cosine of phi is multiplying cosine t, so that should be a 1. Now the cosine of phi equal 1, that's not a problem. We can solve that equation. But this one, the sine of phi equal root 3, this number here is bigger than 1. And that's outside the range of the sine function. So we can't solve this in this particular instance. Well, what's wrong? We've forgotten that there may be a non-1 amplitude to the cosine. So we could have a number out in front here. How do we figure out what that amplitude is? Well, it turns out that amplitude is given by the coefficient on the sine, root 3, squared, plus the coefficient on the cosine, squared, all square rooted. And what we find when we calculate this number is we get three, square root 3 squared is 3, plus 1 is 4, 4 square rooted is 2. So our amplitude is 2. So now we can um, divide through, or let's say factor out, that 2 and rewrite f of t as 2, the amplitude, multiplied by root 3 over 2, so that if we were to multiply it through, we would still have that root 3 sine t plus 1 half. And again, if we were to multiply that through, we'd get 1 times cosine t. So this expression is exactly the one that we had before, but now we have the amplitude out in front, and we have numbers here that you'll notice when squared and added give me 1. And that's exactly what I want in order to turn one of them into a sine value and the other into a cosine value. So what we do now is we match this one to the sine of phi, And we match the cosine of phi to this one, 1 half. Exactly what we tried to do up here, but now we're, we can be sure that this number here will be between minus 1 and 1, and this one here will be between minus 1 and 1. Not only that, we know that the square of this one plus the square of this one comes out to 1, which is required by the trig identity that says sine squared of phi plus cos squared of phi equal 1. <clears throat> okay, so now you'll notice um, how do we figure out what the, um, what the angle is. Well, we go to the unit circle, and here the cosine of phi is the x-coordinate, so we go over to a half in the x-direction, and then the 
y-coordinate is plus root 3 over 2. So we go up here to root 3 over 2. And we draw the line here. Now this is actually not the, well, if we made it the unit circle, we'd have to make this root 3 over 2. So we could do it either way. Actually, I'll call this the unit circle and put root 3 over 2 over here. on this height, and we have one half down here. Now, if either of these were negative, we would go either in the negative direction if it was the cosine that was negative, because cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle, or if, if the sine was negative, we would go negative in the y direction because the sine of phi is the y-coordinate on the unit circle. But here I've chosen a simple example where they're both plus, so we're in the first quadrant. Now we have to figure out what is that angle phi. Well, this is a special triangle where phi, in this case, is pi over 3. And the other angle up here is going to be pi over 6. Remember that the larger number is across from the larger angle, pi over 3. The smaller number is across from the smaller angle, pi over 6. So now we get that phi is equal to pi over 3. And we can now rewrite f of t as equal to 2 times the cosine of t minus pi over 